Hi, this is Doug from AppleIPhoneSchool.com and I'm here to answer your iPhone questions. Today's question comes from, I can't remember who, oh, Lonnie. I believe it was Lonnie that asked me this question and I've had a couple other people ask this pretty recently. Uh, should I set up my iPhone to have the same iTunes account as someone else in my family? So this guy wanted to know if he, he also asked about iCloud, which I'm gonna answer in another video, but um, we're gonna talk about iTunes right now, and that would be like the app store where you install your apps. So he's wondering, should I set up a separate account for them, or should I have the same account between the two of us? And my answer is absolutely 100% share the account. Apple intends for you to do this, I believe originally, I know for iTunes on a computer, you can have up to five computers, and I think they said at one point 10 devices, although I've, I'm have i pretty sure I've logged into more than 10 devices with my iTunes account. So I have all my original iPhones, uh, me and my wife have had, actually we both had the first gen, and we both had the 3G, and I can't remember if we both had the 3GS, but we had the 4, 4S, 5, we have a original iPad, we have the third generation iPad, we have, I have a laptop logged into I believe, and a desktop, I don't know, it just, it's crazy. So, anyways, the, the iTunes that the log into for music can be shared between devices. Um, typically though, when you um, do it on a computer and like a iPad or a computer and an iPhone, when you buy an app, like let's say Twitter costs money, okay, it doesn't, it's free, but let's say it did, and you pay for it on the on the laptop, you typically will have to pay for it again on a device. Now there are some um, apps that you have to pay for them again on the iPad versus the iPhone, because they have more features, blah, blah, blah. But typically, okay, let's say you're gonna install, uh, I'm trying to think of an app that I pay for. Um, oh, I'm using my phone to record this, so this is a bad example, but. Um, let's say you have an app that you want to buy and it's 99 cents uh, Let's say Angry Birds and there's but there's Angry Birds HD. So you'd have to pay for the iPad. So But if your wife has an iPhone and you have an iPhone <clears throat> Your kids have an iPod touch you can buy Angry Birds Star Wars edition Pay for it once and you just go to the other device you go into iTunes you click on purchased and you can see all the device, all the apps that you've already purchased, actually, and all the apps that you have got for free. And you can see which ones are on your device right now, or which ones that you haven't done yet installed on your device. You can see the ones that you paid for but are not installed yet. And so, it, this is a great feature. This is like Apple does this with their um, with their laptops and desktops too. I'm not sure exactly how many devices they allow you to install apps on um, I'm not I don't know if there's a limit I'd have to look that up um, maybe if I can find it I will type it into the description here but um, so let's say you have a desktop at home and you and your wife and kid have all out have laptops and you buy here's a good example pages so you buy pages which is Apple's word version okay and you buy that's 10 bucks on the on the iPad or you get it on the iPhone too so, and then you get on everybody's, but with the laptop, you buy it on the laptop, you go into the same deal. App Store on the, on the laptop, you can download it, and you can download it on the other two for free. So you buy it on one, get it on the other two for free. So this is really sweet. Um, this is not like, um, well for sure Windows. Like let's say um, you bought Microsoft Word, I think they allow you to install it. Most companies allow you to have it on a desktop and a laptop, like Photoshop, let's say, or something like that. So, but typically you would have to go and buy it again. Like, so you have to buy Word for whatever it is, 100, 150 bucks, and then you'd have to go buy it again and buy it again. And it's just, that's so annoying. So um, we're kind of getting off topic a little bit with the laptops and such, but there are, you know, music does cross over if you purchase um, I think I think the music thing is the limitation on devices. I just don't know how that works on iPhones and iPods because you're transferring it to them and all that kind of stuff. But we're talking about apps. We're talking about if you buy pages, you buy numbers, you buy Keynote, they're all 10 bucks a piece. No, you do not have to buy them again on your wife's and then you have to buy them again on your kids and then buy them again. Uh, the cool thing though too is you can also have two devices 
uh, two accounts. Actually, I don't even know what the limit is. I've only tried two. I have a work account. So there's apps that we buy at work that we need to control computers and the systems and things like that remotely and access uh, customer database information, you know, things like that. And then um, I can pay, you know, some of them are paid. And so I can pay for them and use my business account. And then I can also log in and use my personal account on the same device. So that's really cool if you have a phone that your work got you or an iPad that your work got you and you're like, I would really like to put Angry Birds on this so when my kids are crying in the grocery aisle, I can hand them my phone real quick. I know that's a horrible parenting skill. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes you just gotta do it. But <clears throat> not all the time, just don't do it all the time. So now we've jumped to laptops to parenting advice and now we're back to the iPhone. So, but seriously, it's like you can install those apps and you're not limited to like, okay, I can't put Angry Birds on this because my, I don't want my work but I don't want to pay for Angry Birds. It's kind of weird. Or it works with books too. Um, you can buy books in the iBook store, and then you can download them on your other devices. And uh, I'm trying to think where else magazines. I'm sure is the same way. I don't do any magazine stuff with uh, with I can't even think of the name of the app right now because I hate it and I don't use it. newsstand magazines and newspapers and stuff like that. But same deal there. I don't know how the subscription system works. So I'm guessing it's the same as it would be with um, apps and in-app purchases work the same way so if you bought some extra levels on one device you can just go in and it contacts the app store and says you've already purchased these and it re will re-download them and things like that so definitely share an iTunes account um, and save yourself some money and hassle and you can also turn on auto downloads so whether you're downloading a book or an app on one device and you buy it, it'll automatically install on the other devices. I think they might have to be on Wi-Fi, um, but then they'll just automatically install those and uh, you can delete them off there if you want to, but if you'd like to know what your kids are downloading and installing, or if you'd like to just have something that you install on your iPhone, install on your iPad too, you can turn on automatic downloading. I think you can only do that for one account, so if you have your business account, you cannot do that. Um, but um, that that's also a nice little feature. So um, hope that helps. Um, definitely, definitely combine them. And thanks for the question, Lonnie.